Hello everybody, welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Scott, joined by Josh. Hello Scott. Hello Josh, I was going to go with Josh my friend, but I will do and uh, throw it in. Resident Evil 8 got a whole bunch of stuff shown last night, including as part of the Resident Evil showcase, uh, Capcom showed off a horrific looking multiplayer thing, <laughs> which we're barely going to sort of focus on. But thankfully it is free, it's coming as a thank you to uh, tw the 25th anniversary to all the fans and all that kind of thing. Um, but the multiplayer component did not was not their strongest part of that entire showcase. And it's no. a weird cell shaded six person, six person deathmatch thing. Um, that we're going to get a closed beta for next week. But either way, that's just getting that out of the way. In terms of other um, housekeeping stuff, Resident Evil 8 is going to be cross-gen after months or about a year or so of people deciding or trying to guess whether or not it is going to be on PS4 and Xbox One. It is going to be cross-gen, um, and it's coming May 7th, 2021. Um, mm -hmm. So initial thoughts before we get to story stuff, gameplay stuff, what's your what's your thoughts on it being cross-gen after all? Uh, oh, man, I don't want to be down on it too much because <laughs> I obviously know why. Like You're not going to make something like Resident Evil at this point when you don't have the massive install base that you do on last gen on current gen mm. so i know why they've done it like for me um i, I want to see of course a full-blown next gen resident evil but i also want everyone else to experience this who hasn't been able to get a playstation 5 or an xbox series x or whatever so i know mm. why they've done it and i'm sure it will play better on those next gen consoles and as long as it's a great game at the end of the day i don't really mind scott as long as it's a good resident evil game I am, um, I'm, I'm totally fine with it. Yeah, because they put out a list of things that make the PS5 version or the next-gen version next-gen, um, and for the PlayStation 5, it's like SSD loading and ray tracing, mm -hmm. and like you, know, you can resume the game straight away, and like, it's like, yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. Like, yeah, the, the, they're all sort of like baseline things that I would just assume are applied to all PS5 games anyway, uh, minus the ray tracing. But um, yeah, it, I mean, there's still, if you play uh, the Maiden demo, which is the demo they put out last night, which is available for free, um, you play as a new character called the Maiden, you're not playing as Ethan Winters, I think his name is. Dude from RE7. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Maiden demo was the thing where I was like, okay, this looks absolutely gorgeous. Like, this looks photo real, brilliant. The character models are amazing. The environment is stunning. Love the world building. Love everything that they're doing. And it's, it's going to be, you know, one of those things where we it'd have to wait until we can compare, you know, the last gen mm -hmm. and the current gen versions and then see, like, what was lost or what could have happened or whatever. But the foot that they're putting forward is very, very strong. Um, and so let's, like, dive into that stuff. Uh, obviously, Lady Dimitrescu, the new tall vampire lady, which is what people are just defaulting to tall vampire lady, um, which yeah. she does have a name. Uh, Lady Dimitrescu and her daughters. She's got sort of got these three vampire daughters. They're an entire vampire family um, where her daughters can turn into bugs and fly around a little bit like Marguerite <clears throat> from RE7. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, but that whole thing of like this mansion with this vampire family, there's a whole history there as to why they've got this fortune, um, which is touched on in the Maiden demo. Um, what do you think of that stuff? Resident Evil fully embracing vampire style stuff. It's cool, man. Like, I'm mm. totally here for it. When the first trailers came out for Village, I wasn't entirely sold on the entire kind of like setup and the premise and the setting itself. But after seeing this combined with the Bloodborne esque, like, Village itself, like that contrasting with the more upper class, you know, uh, elitist vampire nest that you've got in the castle. Like, it's just cool. It's that type of like horror fantasy that Resident Evil has historically done really well in the past, especially in Resident Evil 4, which this game. Mm just keeps on name dropping. You know, we've got the merchant back, we've got Resident Evil 4's um, oh God, inventory bitch. system, more or less as well. So the fact that they're taking cues from that to me is like a cool thing. Like I like that brand. It's not necessarily what scares me, but I already got that with Resident Evil 7. You know what I mean? I always respect when it comes to this franchise that they rarely just do more of the same from sequel to sequel. There's always some kind of big shift. There's always some kind of change that usually justifies um, the next game having, you know, that main series number, numbering, you know what I mean? Like, even even from the jump to two to three, like, they in included enough difference in there, you know, with, like, Nemesis and stuff, where it felt like, right, this is the next Resident Evil. Right. So that's, that's I'm, I'm here for it. Like, I, I'm so excited to see what they do with it. And now that I've kind of come to terms with the fact that it might not scare me, but it's going to intrigue me and it's going to fascinate me, like, yes, I'm 100%. The thing is, like, I, I love the idea of Resident Evil just being this sort of, like, complete, it's, it's such a, it's such a top-tier, like, royalty-style IP that, like, if they're mm -hmm. going to be the top-tier, the name in horror, then why not explore these different directions? And I get that Resident 
Resident Evil is so associated with zombie stuff. And I don't, do you remember, you know, back when Resident Evil 4 got announced, the general sort of conversations around that game, like obviously it was incredible, you know, pioneered the whole over shoulder camera stuff. But I remember a lot of conversations around like, oh, it's not Resident Evil anymore, it's Las Plagas, yeah. it's the, mm -hmm. you know, they're not really zombies anymore, they're sort of like mind controlled humans. And that was like a whole thing. But I think the time's been pretty kind to that game, obviously in regards to the lore and how it's been received over, like, you know, over the years. Um, and still, I wonder if they're, you know, channeling RE4 this much because they're like, right, we're going to take another big risk. We're going to do a game yeah. that has a bunch of vampires. There's clearly like a werewolf man that's in yeah. here. Um, we haven't even actually seen any zombies yet. Even the dudes that are down in the bottom of the cellar and like, underneath the uh, mansion are all, they all look like familiars that have kind of gone wrong, like humans that wanted to be vampires that have sort of been bitten and didn't turn properly or whatever blade style um, and they're all yes. sort of like yeah, coming yeah, after yeah. you with like swords and they're pouring at you and stuff um but i'm totally there for that stuff i think you can make the resident evil brand brand work with these overblown characters and even main characters like um chris redfield and stuff um so for yeah for me it feels like they're channeling re4 we should totally touch on the fact that the merchant is back the actual merchant from re4 um who is now called the duke um, and he's mm. a large man. He's sort of, he, he spent his time eating all of his profits, literally. Um, and he's a large man. So he's um, he's literally returning, has the same sort of like ho-ho-ho style voice delivery, which I'm a big fan of. Um, and the RE4 inventory, the sort of Tetris style inventory, which I know you're, you've always liked, I think. I love it. I love the <laughs> Resident Evil. But he won't um, play Tetris. It... He won't sit and play Tetris, but <laughs> he'll Tetris RE4. I don't need to play a Tetris because I can just play Resident Evil 4 and get a horror version of it, you know what I mean? And I can also <laughs> shoot some townsfolk while I'm doing it. I love that kind Disgusting. of style of inventory management. To me, survival horror goes hand in hand with that stuff. And I love the stress. Mm. And it might sound daft that comes with, you know, deciding to pick up a grenade or deciding to take on an extra sniper rifle in lieu of some <clears throat> healing items or whatever. And I thought that Resident Evil 7 diluted that down a little too much to the point where you weren't really thinking about it. It was right. quite clear about, you know, when you didn't need items and it sort of it didn't really make it a factor, even though visually it was harkening back to that older system. So I'm I'm pleased to see this make a huge return. And I think that makes sense considering that this game looks way more action focused than Resident Evil 7 ever was. Obviously, Resi 7 in the climax, you were gunning down a lot of enemies, but you know, for the most part, it was only one or two of the molded at a time. But here in the gameplay demo, it's like here's five werewolf boys and a really big tall <laughs> werewolf boy, and you're gonna have to blow them up with red barrels and stuff. I'm not necessarily against that. Again, because even though Resident Evil in action has a dirty reputation because of, you know, six especially and a little bit of five, like the latter half of Resident Evil 4 is incredibly action heavy, but the thing's so tight and the thing's so well paced that it's, it remains scary because it has things like the inventory management uh, to juggle on top of, you know, blasting away and getting headshots. So I'm not inherently against taking a more action oriented approach if it's done right and it's it's nicely balanced and it retains the horror atmosphere which you know this at least from what we've seen very clearly does from what they've uh, shown off last night yeah yeah it's 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 funny because like over the years obviously they experimented so much with this like overblown crazy action stuff and as the only human on the planet playing resident evil 6 in 2021 although ben roy <laughs> did just platinum it um, they, they, they have a weird blend that I feel like if they get it right, you sort of, you are slowly, you know, going through a certain environment, you're picking up different clues, you're solving puzzles, and then something kicks off and all of a sudden you're in this like intense action sequence, you're nailing headshots, you're trying to escape, and you know, whatever, and they can blend those two things together in a way that I don't think any other IP does, because it is this weird blend of like anime sensibilities, overblown characters, but still slow burn horror, like Eastern style horror, and I think yeah. that when they get that right, hardly any of the, the games, like they've always gone down one of two routes and I feel like they're always striving to get that like perfect balance but I do love what they're kind of going for in 8. Um, last thing for the gameplay is that they're bringing back the blocking from RE7 you can put your hands up block attacks um, but now yeah. if you press L1 uh, Ethan will kick a dude away and then you can sort of I get, they sort of throw that in there as like a, this is how you're going to deal with crowds kind of thing and um, that bit where you're where the dude's like Ethan's like backing away from the guy with the giant hammer that was so Dark Souls for me like yeah, so yeah, Soulsborne it was. It really um, as if they're taking like a lot because obviously you know there's comparisons to Bloodborne already um, um, you know, small village infested with monsters, whatever. Um, but yeah, I kind of wonder how much the, the Souls influence has, has finally sort of taken hold, like even though it's a different genre. Something else that we should uh, throw in here as well is the state of Chris Redfield. Um, sort of gone from boulder punching dude in RE5 over to sort of mysterious savior at the end of RE7 and with his umbrella logo on the helicopter, I think, when he was coming to make the save. And then mm -hmm. in this one, they had that early trailer from last year or the year before where Chris seems to shoot Maya or Mia, uh, Ethan's partner. And then in 
this thing in the new story trailer, um, he's holding like a baby, which they also show Maya in like a flashback where it seems as if Maya and Ethan were always trying for a kid. And somehow, I mean, maybe that's, I assume that's like a vision, something that um, Ethan is sort of conjuring up, imagining Chris doing horrible things to his partner and his child. Well, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, uh, in the trailer, I'm sure they mentioned that Ethan's going to the village and going to the castle in search of his kidnapped daughter, you know what I mean? Mm. So is the case that Chris took it? What what role does Chris play in this story? I don't buy for a second that he's going to be evil for the full thing. I'm sure we will no. play as Chris at some point in it. But I like that, you know, they're making both of these characters' stories entwined because obviously we don't know anything about Ethan Winters apart from the fact that everyone refers to him by his full name every single time they <laughs> reference him. It's like me and you um, doing the news. Yeah, exactly. But I think, uh, you know, going forward, a great way to make him feel like a proper part of the Resident Evil canon is to pair him with someone like Chris and give him this weirdly connected, weirdly personal story that centers around, you know, his family and how Chris has come in, you know, intentionally and not on the side of good or on the side of evil and kind of mm -hmm. like blown that apart and the whatever drama comes out from it. It's a... Uh, it's intriguing. I, I don't know if they're going to do it well, but um, I'm excited to see where it goes. I do think, for one last thing for this, um, mentioning Chris, there's also uh, Lady Dimitrescu in the, in the story bit where she's sitting on the phone. Uh, she's talking to uh, Mother Miranda, um, sort mm -hmm. of reporting into her, saying, like, look, don't worry, I'll take care of Ethan Winters. Um, she mentions her brother, Heisenberg. She's like, oh, Ethan got past yeah. Heisenberg. Uh, I assume Heisenberg is the dude with the bottle shades. Um, who like, assumedly you fight outside before you go inside for the mansion. Maybe that's the first half of the game or whatever. But we know that Heisenberg is Dimitrescu's brother. Um, and I think that they all, she also mentions the ceremony. She's like, oh yeah, don't worry. I'm still preparing everything for the ceremony. What if the ceremony is in relation to Ethan's kid? That's why mm -hmm. it's been taken. And what if Chris Redfield is undercover? He's going to pretend to give the baby and then he's going to mm -hmm. do cool things later. That's my I'm shot. sure that's, I, I'm almost certain, Scott, that that's going to happen, you know. I feel like there's <laughs> going to be that shift about halfway through where you start, you, you pick up as Chris. Because, I mean, lest we forget, in the DLC for Seven, like, part of that was from Chris's perspective. So it's mm -hmm. not like they've, they haven't implemented him as a playable character before. And that could be a tease for this kind of Resident Evil 8 that is split between these two different perspectives. That would be neat. I would be here for it. And I, I, I just want to play it by now. Like, May is too far away <laughs> from me. Uh, like, I don't want it to be rushed or anything, of course, but I am, um, I'm looking forward to it very much. I have not, haven't had a chance to play the Maiden demo yet, but I absolutely will get on so uh, that tonight. My big question, of course, before I go, because I need a big question for every single one of these videos, is <laughs> they didn't mention VR, at least from what I saw. No. And I, I'm pretty sure I watched it all last night. Uh, they didn't mention it, which kind of sucks, because I played all of Resident Evil 7 in VR and would like to do it here, but I'm not sure what the case is. If I don't, if I don't get that, I wouldn't be. It's not like a deal breaker for me, but I would. I would like to see it, some kind of support for it, Scott Tilford, I'm not going to lie. I would assume that because the levels are so much more intricate and there's so much more visual detail that maybe they arguably don't want to sacrifice that for the lower mm -hmm. resolution it would have to be to make it work on VR. Plus the headache that is getting PSVR to work on a PS5 or like getting the additional cable that most people won't have. I wonder if at some point they just, they just you know, tot those figures up and go, is it actually worth us doing this? When even Sony are taking a step back from it for at least another year or two. Um, in a, a sort of major capacity. Um, I don't even think of the VR component. I just sort of forgot about that, that, which maybe speaks volumes as to how integrated RE7 and VR is. But I know that if you did play through it in VR, then it's like, that is the way to play that game. But like, I just didn't do it that way. But oh, Dude. Go I back, get the headset out. I've, I've been trying to convince <laughs> you to get the headset out for about a year and a half now, but Ugh. go back through Resi 7, play the DLC as well. Get it all caught up for Resi 8 and play it in VR, please. For I me. Am, I'm planning on, on going back through RE7. So but Sorry? I mean, look, I've got, I've got No Man's Sky to play in VR. I can't, I can't factor <laughs> in other things, but I am planning an RE7 playthrough, I think. I recommend that for a lot of people, seeing as how much DLC came out for that um, over the years. But yes, let us know what you think down in the comments below of, these, of everything else that they showed for Resident Evil 8, the new characters, the tone, the mansion, everything else. Um, for now, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. I've been Josh from WhatCulture.com. And we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>